We did it. The adventure dog is out the river. There are bear tracks everywhere. Big buck tracks coming down. And you want to go check them out, don't you? All right, let's do this. Hey, adventure dog. Yeah, we don't need her going off and doing her thing in there. Come here. Hey, just stick close. All right. Yeah, right into the right into the tripod. Better safe than sorry. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it was a pretty nasty video. It's been going around for a while of a, some people camping, two dogs, and a cat, cougar, comes prancing right up the drive of the campsite, broad daylight, grabs a dog and latches on. And the owner had a frickin' machete and went to chop it on the cat. It's a pretty gross scene, but it's just a clear example of that one in a million that can go down, right? Now, one in a million seems to happen to me fairly often. So, make sure she doesn't get snatched. I'll make it so that she can't. Look at this thing. This is ridiculous. Look at it. This thing was in the palm of my hand when I first met it. It seemed like yesterday. <laughs> All right, don't get too tangled up. Gonna come up? You get a little scared? Come here. Come here. All right, you gotta sit tight though, right? You gotta sit still. Your little perch. Now, um, yeah, I've had the same email, has been emailed to me numerous times currently. Uh, somebody caught something walking on an island, shore of a lake in Ontario, and um, I think it's all over the internet. All the, all the, the Sasquatch channels are posting up and doing their, what's it called, a breakdown? <laughs> Shit. And, um, People ask me what I think. First off, I'm I'm no video expert. I'm no expert on on uh, I'm just no expert. All right, and I always tell everybody to ask yourself what you think when it comes to anything. It's it's all about what you think. Okay. Um, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, what do I? My first initial impression of it was whatever that being was, something's hurting. It didn't seem like a. Let me think about the descriptions. Right? Think about what everybody always sees. They see something built absolutely powerful. Quote, effortlessly went straight up a cliff face, a mountainside, never faltered one bit, jumping over logs on the way up, I've heard from first-hand experiencers. And that is a very strong uh, being being described. So what I'm getting at when I see when I saw that video is it looked like whatever it is, whoever it is, they're hurting. They're not that smooth. They don't carry themselves like a superiorly massive, strong as shit being. Now, as an example, excuse me, watch, you know, The Rock, everybody knows who The Rock is. Watch how he walks, right? He is fluid, stands up, fluid. You can tell that dude is very, very strong, right? In his movements alone, you can tell that abnormal human frame is very strong and moves very fluid, smooth, with strength. And you can tell he can kick it in gear, no problem. So when you compare, when you compare an upright being such as a human who is a, extremely strong and fit, and the way that strong, fit body moves with confidence, fluid, well, the being that I'm looking at on that rock in the lake, do I think it's a real one? I don't know, could be. Um, might be, might not be, I don't know. That's the shitty thing about videos. Do I, I'm leaning towards, it probably is one, just because I've seen one. Did it look anything like what I saw? I didn't see, I haven't seen one move like that. Well, I've seen something real creepy move real fast out of my sight, pop up here, and pop up there, and pop up there, and there, 20 yards apart, and about 200 yards away from me, and that freaked the shit out of me, but I haven't seen broad daylight, something upright, ripping, and that being that walked across that rock, uh, that rock, that shoreline to me, looks like it's 
it's hurt. Something's not comfortable with it, whether it's wounded, hurting, it's just not moving like an extremely strong, kick-ass, intimidating, muscle-bound, strong as shit frame. So, there you go. That's my thoughts on that video, and moving along. Are you going to sit here? A dirt bike went screaming by up top, and she's still at that age where she hears crazy noises. She ducks for cover. I flashed up the chainsaw yesterday, and she shit herself. And she was basically half wild growing up out of her from puppyhood, and they had to scramble and hide underneath the deck at that remote cabin ranch. Right? Anyway, I'm sure uh, soon enough she's going to be the ferocious protector of Dad instead of sucking to him for sucking to him for safety. Well, that's not a bad thing at this age, right? You don't need him running around like a pain in the butt. Now let's get some voices heard. Okay, all right, adventure puppy. Seems content on the quad, doesn't she? This is titled "A Texas Granny Shoots a Sasquatch." You can use my name, Daniel Hooker from Michigan. I'm 66 years old with no reason to make this up. It was your channel that made me recall these events. My mother was born and raised in Texas, and she would visit her grandmother near Anna, Texas. This is a story my great grandmother told my mother, and my mother told me. She lived out in the country and raised chickens, and was a tough old pioneer woman. Her husband had died, she was alone on the farm in the early 1900s. She kept having chickens stolen, so she had a shotgun by the door to catch whatever it was. She woke up in the middle of the night to chickens making a racket. She said she saw a very tall, hairy creature standing on two legs in the pen. She blasted one barrel at the creature, and it turned to run, and she shot at it with the other barrel. She insisted her story was true, and had a peppered front porch railing and posts to prove she was shooting at this thing. You read a story from someone talking about a creature near Anna, Texas. That's what, that's what brought back my mother's story. Here are my stories. My dad's brother had a cabin near Leroy, Michigan. He would take my brother and I to his cabin many weekends during the year. I think it was around, I was around 14 years old. My brother was 12. He would teach us to hunt and fish and shoot guns. We never missed the chance to go with him as he had no children. He also had a huge German Shepherd that was fearless. We went walking on state land with the dog. It was the middle of the day in the fall. The path we were on led us around this small hill about 10 feet high. We couldn't see over. The woods went quiet and then it sounded like a freight train coming through the woods towards us from the hill. The dog went crazy and took every bit of strength my uncle had to hold him back. We wanted up there to fight whatever it was coming at us. I think I can safely say we were terrified, except for that dog. Wow, that's a freaking kick-ass dog. You could tell it was running on two legs with heavy pounding feet, branches breaking, just as it should have come crashing over that little hill, it went completely silent. Nothing. The dog went quiet, but kept looking at the top of the hill where this thing should have been. We waited for a bit, and my uncle said, we should go back. No words were spoken on the trek back, and it was never spoken of until I started watching your videos. So yes, 50 plus years went by, and I was talking to my little brother and asked him if he remembered that encounter, and he said he did. So there's a couple of old guys talking about an incident that happened years and years ago. My brother had no idea why we never talked about it. We just didn't. Yeah, that, obviously that is very peculiar to me always, right? My uncle's long gone, but I wish I could go back, go back and ask him about the, that day back in 69. Around 72, same cabin, only this was winter. Couldn't get up the road to the cabin as the snow was too deep. We pulled over. We pulled our supplies up the road in a toboggan. My dad's other brother came up with his snowmobile on Saturday. Had big fun until it was time to go. It was a Sunday evening. We packed up our things and trudged back down to the cars. It was dark and snowing, and my uncle had left his car keys back up at the cabin. I told him I'd walk back and get the keys. It took me about a half hour to get back up there, and I grabbed the car keys and started to make my way back down the two-track through the woods. I had only gone a little way when I heard branches breaking like something was following me down the hill. It was off my right side, paralleling me. It was close, but I couldn't see anything. All I had was my hunting knife, so I pulled it out and began running down the hill, knowing any moment I was going to be attacked. I've never been so afraid. 
Just then I heard my uncle's snowmobile coming up the hill and his headlight shining at me. He decided I was taking too long and pulled his machine off the trailer to find me. He passed me and drove up a ways to turn around. I was back to the vehicles when my other uncle came back. He asked me if I, was, if I lost my knife. I guess I dropped it in the snow running down the hill. It should have been buried in that deep snow, but my uncle said it was on top and easy to spot. I never told anyone what really happened or why I had my knife out of the sheath. Last one, 1980s, married, living in Door, Michigan, D-O-R-R. -R. About two hours south of my uncle's cabin, lots of woods and living in a nice house, summertime. In the middle of the night, we both woke from a sound sleep by what sounded like a woman screaming at the top of her lungs. My wife was terrified and asked me if I heard that. Knowing she heard it and I wasn't dreaming, I jumped up, put my pants on, and grabbed my pistol. She, or whatever it was, started screaming again, and I ran into the woods yelling, Where are you? Shining my flashlight all over, but not seeing anything. The screaming stopped, and I stood still. I stood for a long time and slowly walked back to the house. I told my wife it was probably a rabbit getting caught by a fox or a coyote. I never spoke of it again. When I was a kid, I'd, I had a pet rabbit and decided to give it a bath. I accidentally did dish soap in the rabbit's eyes and it started screaming so loud, I fell over backwards to get away. <laughs> That's where my rabbit explanation came from. The screaming I heard that night was no rabbit or owl, and I've heard them both. Thanks, Steve, for a place to get this stuff out in the open, Dan Hooker. Dan, thank you for making a place, helping make this place a place to get this shit out, man. I'm glad you, I'm glad you emailed this dog is completely passing out on the quad. I don't know how she's staying on here. I gotta hold her up my leg. There we go. Alright, we're comfy. You good? Alright, the screaming. The screaming woman sound. That would absolutely scare the living shit out of anybody in the woods, man. Like as I'm reading it, I was just picturing it belting out from right behind me and across the river or right here. When it's so pristine and quiet, that would scare the absolute shit out of anyone. I don't know why they do it. All right, here we go. Mark this one as red. Adventure dog is straddled the quad like this in my lap and passing right out. <laughs> All right. This is titled Bigfoot in Texas. Please keep my name out of this email. I was traveling down the highway heading towards Bourne, Texas for a family reunion. And as I reached the hill before my brother's house, I saw a massive creature, eight to nine feet tall, black color with gray, a human face and massive chest, maybe 700, 800 pounds. I slowed down, saw the creature crossing the road and he looked at me for a few seconds. And it was a little early in the day, so I flashed my bright light. He stopped running and gave me a very hateful, hateful face. But it turned around and took off into the woods. I tried to tell them at the reunion, but I was met with laughter and jokes. I don't know what I saw. And they are for real and all over the place. Listening to you, Steve, I feel very comfortable. And knowing that I am a partner of your round table. God bless you, Steve, and keep up the good work. Thank you again. Okay, man, short, straight to the point. Welcome to the club. You didn't ask to be a member of. What are you smelling? Hmm? What do you see him? You're smelling something. You always listen to your animals. What do you got going on? Right? Am I missing something? She's catching where the nose. She's smelling something new, 100%. It's got her up from a dead sleep now. Yeah, she's smelling it. What is it? Is it bear?
Well, she doesn't seem scared of growling, right? She's smelling something. Could be a deer, bear, something new to her. She has, I'm sure she smelled grizzly bear where she came from. She hasn't had a run in here yet at our place. It's coming. Anyway, thanks for that email, man. Absolutely appreciate it. Don't be scared to talk about it. People that laugh, they only laugh because they're scared. This isn't a funny topic. Otherwise, like I said before, comedians will be using it nonstop. All right. Okay, hold on. Hold on, adventure puppy. All right, what do we got? Just titled my third encounter. Another and another cryptid encounter. Steve, thank you for being for you and your no-nonsense attitude. I live in Mesa, Arizona. I went camping on weekend in October. We're going to Oak Creek Canyon up in Sedona, Arizona. All the campsites were full up. So, if we continued on 89A heading north to Flagstaff, Arizona and get a campsite there, but to no avail, all campsites were full. But at, at the last campsite, the couple who ran it, they told me that if I allowed, if I follow these directions, you'll find an old growth forest. And all I had to do is find a nice site. After six miles anywhere, you want to camp is fine. Cool, I'll do that. So we get there and there's another and there's one other campers already there, so we kept going. And after about a mile, there it is, the perfect place to camp, about 30 feet from the road. We pulled off and then set up camp. My son Sammy and I are gonna get some firewood, and it's plentiful all over the place. And when we had a huge pile, we went and waited for my wife to cook dinner. After dinner, marshmallows and stories, we went to bed. My wife and I, plus Sammy, 10, Catherine, 5, are in the largest tent. My oldest daughter, Chelsea, and her friend also, and her friend also, Chelsea, in the two-man tent. It's about 2 a.m., and I get woke up by my wife, and she said, there's someone or something walking around the campsite. I listened, and when I heard something, I unzipped the tent, popped out with the flashlight, and I saw nothing. I told her it was a raccoon and not to worry, and to go back to bed. Now, I've been working eight hours a week, and this is my first day off in a month. Ten minutes, and I woke up again. That thing is huge, and it can't be no raccoon. I grab your gun and the floodlight. I do as I'm told, but I still don't find anything. This went on all night, and stopped at dawn. The kids are waking up, so I started the fire and put on coffee. My wife crawls back in the tent and went to sleep. As my son and I... Sorry... As my son and I did our morning ritual, so I'm the responsible adult, and I cook breakfast, take my wife a plate, and then she goes back to sleep, what do you do? This is, this encounter is what I think is a skinwalker. Going to work one morning with my co-worker driving, we were about 50 minutes early. There have been sightings of large coyotes in the area of South Scottsdale, and the res is only one mile away. Going in front of the building about five miles an hour, we're almost at the guard shack to check in, and I see a flipping huge coyote coming towards us in the left-hand lane. And huge is an understatement. Its back is above the hood of the car. Its head is as high as mine. As we passed each other, it freaked me out by locking eyes with me and kept walking by. My coworker driving turned around and decided to chase it down. Flipping idiot. An, indent, an indention in the building is where the coyote goes. He hits the high beams and when we get there, no coyote. And in its place is a FBI, effing big Indian. Levi's, no shirt, Long hair in a ponytail, leaning on the wall with his left hand, on his hip with the right hand. What the F? We freaked when he looks over his shoulder at us, and I quickly looked away and said, Go! Leaving rubber to the guard shack and run inside, have to wait until it was light for about an hour before we were able to get our tools out of the car. Not savvy, but a good sighting anyway. Thanks. Billy go forth. <laughs> All right, well, that's a different one. And maybe, possibly, I don't know, somebody, and especially some of our First Nations superhero friends, are going to chime in on that one. And, and there may be an explanation for that. There may not be. 
and there may be some hidden uh, not spoken out loud about explanations for that as well but that sounds that's a one hell of a freaking story man I've never heard that one that flavor before I don't think except we have heard of some human beings in Afghanistan doing some crazy abnormal shit some locals there uh, the the description of the coyote I've had almost an identical description of a animal here in British Columbia mid north midway at British Columbia more to the west coast and a guy saw something close to that description but he said it was more like a hyena same size description and he said it walked right across in front of his vehicle like it owned the joint and he didn't want me to share his name nothing with the details in that one well, what do you hear now you hear something smell something one thing this dog is alert man she is alert all the time <laughs> ready for that chunk of danger to come bursting out of the house aren't you and she bolts for cover but anyway I don't know I don't have much to say about that sighting that experience because I don't know shit about that stuff myself but lots of people email in similar descriptions of that animal for sure so that's the first time we've heard of it turning into a human being crazy I'm sure people are gonna chime in if there's any if there's anything to this story somebody's gonna chime in somebody is all right this is titled okay fixed it I think lol I believe for a long time these to be just natural animal sounds that I just haven't heard before. Coyotes, owls, and crows. Now I'm not so sure. These sounds follow me. They also lasted a lot longer than I have ever encountered by these common creatures. So much so I finally decided it was strange enough that I found it worthy on finally setting down my pack and digging my phone out to capture the sounds. In other words, they started long before I started to record them. They also lasted, they also lasted a lot longer than I recorded. Note, I hunt where no one else does, so I traverse the ground at night without a light. I'm not worried about getting shot by another hunter shooting at sounds. I also find it easier to orient and navigate my path using the skyline, trees, or their absence as well as hills against the night sky. I'm interested in what other experienced woodsmen might think see attached. All right, so as I'm right here, I can't say shit because I can't hear it until I get back to the office, right?
This one's titled More from Tennessee. And I'll tell you what, Tennessee has got a lot of shit going on. Always has. Hello, Steve. My name is Glenn Clark, and you can share my name. I live in Pikeville, Tennessee, about an hour and a half north of Chattanooga. About 2012, 2014. I would have my windows open at night, and all three of those years, maybe two or three times, I'd have this ungodly smell come through my yard. It smelt like sewage, piss, something rotten. I'd go up, but never seen anything until 2019, in October. A friend and I had been fishing, and I got home about 1.30 a.m., pulled up in my driveway to see a set of orange-red eyes looking at me from over a truck in my backyard. Now, these eyes are as big as a golf ball, or maybe a little bigger, and six to eight inches apart. Okay, remember you guys, six to eight inches apart is massive. I told you before, a huge bear is like four and a quarter or something in between eyes. I sat for 10 or 15 minutes watching them dimming and brightening. My lights with them, oh sorry. I sat, I sat for 10 to 15 minutes watching them dimming and brightening my lights with them never changing. I'm only 40, 45 feet from them and about 50 feet from my door. To be honest, I was needing to piss when I got there. So after seeing them, I had to watch them before I got out to go. I finally got, I finally get out, get in front of my vehicle facing them so I could see if they move the lights off. When I got finished, I got my flashlight out, shined it at it, and it was still there. But it finally blinked. I said, well, I guess those are eyes. Walked in the house. I didn't see or hear anything else that night, and believe me, I was up all night. I told my fishing buddy about it the next morning, and he thought I was full of shit. And I told him I was serious. So he comes by that evening with me, with me, a better flashlight before we go fishing. I get home again around midnight, and I look at the yard, I look the yard over, and I didn't see anything. We go fishing the next evening, and I get home around 1.30 a.m., still don't see anything. About an hour later, I'm sitting in my man cave, rolling cigarettes, and something comes up and smells my wall about two feet from my head. I said out loud, surely to God, I didn't just hear what I thought I heard. No longer than it took me to say that it smelled the window, this inhale lasted a good 12 to 15 seconds and was louder than anything I've ever heard before. This inhale lasted a good 12 to 15 seconds and was louder than anything I've ever heard before. That'd be so bizarre to hear something like that. Now my gun in the other room, about 20 feet away, but I wouldn't have used it anyway because a 410 shotgun ain't going to do anything to something that big. The reason I say that is because where I smelt, where it smelt the window is about nine, nine and a half feet up. I had an axe that had a broke handle that was in here where I had been working on getting the handle out of it. I did pick it up and said out loud, if you're going to try and hurt me, my dogs or cats, I promise, if, if you and hand or a paw comes through my window, I'm going to hurt you. In my mind, I was thinking, arm comes through the glass, that's the first chop. Second chop is the head. I didn't go out till the next morning. There was a place in the yard up in my kitchen window that it, it had wallowed in the grass. It was all mashed in the same direction, about 12 feet across, and found two steps it had made before it was in the rock driveway. The steps were about five feet apart. I wore an 11E shoe and my buddy wore a 14EEE -E -E, and neither were even close to being as big as the prints. I've not seen or heard anything else till this year and about three weeks ago the eyes were looking over the handrail on my back porch. I looked back at it and said, hello, I'm not going to hurt you. I went on about what I was doing. I didn't see or hear anything else that night. About two weeks ago, I noticed a hornet's nest above my kitchen window on the eve of the house. I was going to leave it to, I was going to leave it till it got colder and get it down. Last week on Tuesday, I was going to the store. When I opened the door up, there laid the nest wadded up in a ball. I figured it, if it's, I figured it hit its head on it when it was looking in the window, and got it for me. I don't really know, I don't really know, but I said thank you for doing that for me but I've seen nothing else yet. Now today, I went to a road rescue, a friend that had broke down and I was telling his wife about it. Now she tells me she saw one on Saturday night at their place about three miles from me. She said it was squatting down and looked like it didn't have a neck. 
She said all her hair stood on end and she run back in their house, scared to death. But this one has green eyes. I welcomed her to the club and I told them I'd see them tomorrow. Sorry for the long story, but I tried to be as detailed as I could. Thank you for your doing, Steve. It makes things easier to know there is thousands of others like us around. Take care, Glenn. Glenn, appreciate it, man. That was, uh, there's no paragraphs in there. I, I, I got a little rough reading it. Sorry, you guys. And, uh, Glenn, I'm going to imagine you're probably going to anyway, but you probably may want to uh, forward this, forward the video off to your friend that saw that thing squatting down. And then, uh, She'll know, she, she'll know that the club's actually pretty big and it's a very serious club and there's no bullshit and it's a safe place to uh, share what you got. And then, maybe she'll want to share what she saw with everybody. Who knows, right? Tennessee. I wonder why Tennessee's so on fire with crazy weird shit going on. I wonder why. No adventure dogs having fun. Let's read some more. Encounters in Northern California. Hello Steve, I've been watching your channel for a couple years now and really appreciate the work you do for all of us getting the message out there. I've been hesitant to send mine in. There are too many stories. You have read crossover into mine. You can call me Anthony. I've altered some names in the message below as I do not know if I have permission from the individuals to use their names. I've had a few experiences while growing up in the Pacific Northwest, specifically in the Klamath National Forest in Northern California. I grew up in a small cattle ranch in a very rural community. Our property butted up directly to the forest mountains right alongside the Klamath River. I was interested in the outdoors and would often go out looking for squirrels and rabbits to keep them out of our garden. As the years passed, I spent quite a lot of time out in the back side of the property, hiking up to our natural spring and just exploring. Once I got old enough, my grandfather gifted me a lever action rifle chambered in 32 Winchester Special. I took that out with me in, in those mountains for the first, year I, the first year I drew a deer tag. I was up in the mountains on a fall afternoon and it was starting to get dark, so I packed up my gear and began to hike the mile or so home. I got a strange feeling I was being watched, then smelled a god-awful smell. I quickened my pace, not understanding what was going on. The smell persisted as I made my way down the mountain until the fence line behind our house became visible through the trees. At that point, I heard and felt the most god-awful loud scream I'd ever heard in my young life. It sounded like a woman being murdered with a mixed, deep, bellowing growl. That description's come into us about 50, 10,000 times. I could feel it rattling in my chest. I racked around into the chamber and sprinted the rest of the way home. Probably not the safest course of action, but I wanted to get the hell out of there. I didn't mention any of this to my parents when I got home to avoid a, avoid causing a fuss. But that night I was in the bathroom doing my business when I heard a loud thud, cackling laughter coming from directly outside the small I hope that was snow. What are you doing? You all right? Man, that whole bottom half of that tree just went whoop. There's no wind, but I'm pretty sure it's snow that hit it. Otherwise, the dog would be freaking out. Sorry. When I heard a loud, loud, cackling laughter coming from directly outside the small window above my tub, let me tell you, I'd never gotten my drawers up so fast in my life. I booked it out. I booked it out of the shitter and ran into the living room. My mom was sitting on the couch and had a strange look on her face. Did you hear that? I asked her. She shook her head no and asked me if I was alright and what was going on. I explained the day's events and she looked at me seriously and said, sometimes strange things happen out there. I don't want you behind the house out in the woods for a while. I gladly agreed and had a hard time falling asleep for a few nights. Several years later, I had just graduated from high school and I was waiting to go to Air Force Basic Training in Texas. For a last hoorah before I left, three of my friends and I headed up to Martin's Dairy Campground for a couple nights of relaxation. The first night was pretty typical for dumb redneck teenagers. Lots of booze and jackassery. We all passed out. 
The next morning, two of my buddies headed out since they had to work that afternoon, just leaving me, my friend Jay, and his Rottweiler mixed pup. We spent the day exploring around the campground and the surrounding forest until we found a circular glade in the middle of the forest. Dead center in the glade was a small tree. Jay had a brand new hatchet and we were tempted to try it out, so we hacked down the poor little sapling like assholes. As soon as it fell, we both immediately began to feel a strange pressure of uneasiness, like we were being watched. We hurriedly made our way back to camp with the dog in tow and set about building a fire. It seemed to get dark faster than normal, probably our imaginations, but once the sun started to fade, we both saw dark figures moving in the tree line on the other side of the creek that runs through the campground. We lapped it off the shadows, but we were, but we were both Sorry, but we were both scared out of our wits. The dog had retreated to the in, to inside the tent and would not come out. Being redneck kids, we had brought along our hunting rifles and 22s. I had my 32 Winchester and Jay had a 30 odd six. And we decided to load them up and sit back to back, facing away from the firelight, so we could see out into the woods. Dark figures continued to move out in the hollows, but it was oddly quiet out. We finally had enough of being outside by the fire with the creepy ass shadows. It was probably about 10 or 11 p.m. at this point, and headed into the tent. And that's when the noises started. A strange whistling whoop came from across the creek. A short time later, we heard heavy footsteps on the wooden bridge that crossed the creek, followed by the strange whoop. There was a sudden splash as whatever was on the bridge jumped into the creek and waded through the river. I looked at Jay, had the same. He had the same look in his eyes that I had in mine. Abject terror. There was something shuffling in the dirt and I could hear something moving towards my blazer. A beautiful 71 K5. No shit, I had the same one. I had the same vehicle at one point. I missed that thing. Yeah, I missed mine too. And then another whoop. Footsteps moved toward the front of the tent behind the fire. Jay and I had a quiet conversation. We were both sure we were going to die here, and if we saw a shadow in the firelight, it was going to get whatever we had in our rifles. During this whole debacle, the dog was under the sleeping bags whimpering. He was a solid pup, about 75 pounds, and Jay hadn't seen any fear in him before this night. I called out, I'll effing shoot you, my hand to God. Then footsteps headed back towards the creek. Whoops, the whoops footsteps and splashing continued for a few hours between the bridge, blazer, and tent, but no figure came visible in the firelight. Eventually we passed out from exhaustion. When we woke up the next morning, we packed as fast as lightning and threw everything in the back of the blazer. The only problem was, when I turned the key, it was completely dead, not even a click. No lights, no radio had been left on. Had a brand new battery from when I trashed the old one off-roading a couple months back. Dad was pissed. I may or may not have screamed curses. I may or may not have screamed curses for quite some time. We panicked. We thought about pushing the truck down the hill, but it was a beast, and without power steering or brakes, we probably would have gone off a cliff heading down the mountain. It was an auto, too, so a push start was out of the question. A few hours later, a good Samaritan drove through camp, and we waved him down. His little Suburban would not give enough juice to jump the blazer, so we pleaded with him to call our friends slash parents, whoever, when he got back to town. This is long before cell phones, summer of 96. We offered, we offered him cash we had on us, but he refused the money, took the numbers, and headed off. Time passed, and it was starting to get dark again. Oh no, that sucks. We once again felt pressure come upon us, and we knew we were not alone. We put the dog in the blazer and got out our rifles. I think this is it, I told Jay. He didn't see anything and he just nodded. Both of us were shitting bricks at this point. As the light faded, we heard a car coming up the dirt road. Turning, we saw the headlights stop about 150 yards from the campground through the trees. It sat there for a moment and then pulled up. It was our friends. I've never been so happy to see their ugly faces in my life. My buddy Dee's little Honda set up to jump the blazer, hoping it would work this time. Dee got out of the car, slowly looking around, not seeing anything. After a few minutes of charging and revving, we got the old beast started and headed down the hill. The rig ran like an abs the rig ran like absolute dog shit all the way down the mountain and finally sputtered to a stop as we hit the highway. This is all in a very rural area. 
there were no cars on the road. I was relieved to be away from that place. I hopped out of the truck and my buddy Jay, too, was talking to Jay, to Jay and I asked him, what's wrong with D? Jay, too, laughed and said, that pussy saw a bear near the campground and freaked him out. I walked over to D's window and asked him, did you see a bear? His reply made my skin crawl and I felt like I was going to vomit. It wasn't a bear. His eyes were in the bushes and then it stood up and kept standing up. His face was pale and it was clear to me he saw something that we weren't supposed to see. Fast forward 23-ish years, I was in the Bigfoot Museum near Sandy, Oregon and I was in the back listening to some audio. I wasn't really paying attention until I heard a carbon copy of the whistling whoop over the headset. My blood ran cold and my hair immediately turned to wire. Sorry for the long email, Steve. I know I didn't see anything like that. Sorry. I know I didn't see anything like many other folks have. I tell you what. When you were sure you lived past what should have been your last day topside, it changes your perspective on a lot of things. I have a couple of other, I have a couple other accounts from my father. But I've already taken up too much of your time. Best wishes to you and your family. You haven't taken too much of my time, man. We took up a ship pile of your time. Which is valuable too, right? We can vent your dogs out enough. But uh, yeah, I want to hear about what your dad had to say. We all do, big time. So so uh, you get a chance to uh, scratch it off and send it out to us, to the people through me, all right? We all want to hear, man. We all want to hear. You ready to go? You wanna come over here? Maybe I should put her on that rock for a bit. I'm gonna put her on the rock behind me and let her hang out and see what she thinks of that. She's a good dog. But anyway, I wonder how your battery, I wonder why your battery got got drained. And then I wonder if, if next time you email me, if you would, uh, did you find out why the truck ran like shit? And if you did, tell me what was wrong with it. Why did your truck run like shit and then crap out of the bottom of the hill? That sounds like a toasted alternator to me probably was because actually let me tell you guys a story one time I was at a place called Yubo it's halfway up Lake Couchin it was in my early 20s and I was headed to Banfield on the coast taking logging roads a couple hours of logging roads remote had a bunch of beers some friends and I had a new alternator put in mine and uh, the mechanic wired it up wrong in Yubo and by the time I left the pub with these guys started driving to Banff, it was real late and uh, using anything electric electrical in those old vehicles that drains your battery obviously and the uh, alternator doesn't charge it up and you, and you sputter to a halt and it's piss and rain and I took a shortcut through the Klanawa you can google it up, Klanawa, I videotaped from there in the past and uh, I slept in my vehicle and it died on a bridge and sure enough and all I was thinking about was oh god no not here not here seriously how am i gonna get out of this one what's gonna be banging on my window tonight that was a shitty night and then sure enough something's banging on my window and it was two guys about three in the morning and they were poaching shake blocks they didn't have to say it i knew it but they gave me a jump because they had to get my truck out of the way to get out of there and i got my truck jumped and i literally drove all the way back to yubo with my head out the window watching the space between the trees just make sure I was on the logging road for five miles an hour. That's how I got out. So it sounds like it was an alternator to me. It sucked the uh, energy out of your truck, right? I bet you. I'll bet it was. If not, tell me about it. But anyway, I gotta get going. She's antsy. I'm freezing. We got shit to do. I'm glad I got more voices heard. It's amazing how many people are still watching us and still sitting on the fence not ready to crack yet. It's amazing, isn't it? That's fine. When you're ready. Everybody's here when you're ready. No pressure. Or don't ever do it. Doesn't matter. As long as you hang out and learn. Just keep learning more, right? Learn more truth. Question two I want to ask everybody. And I got another message too. Uh, one thing is, is who, who are you all listening to for truth today when you have time? I know we've encouraged everyone to dump mainstream media. I mean, they are the 100% enemy of the people. you got to dump them. But who are you listening to for truth that you have confidence in? Leave that list in the comment section below this video. All right, you guys? That'd be handy for me and a lot of other people. 
I got my own list and I'll share it eventually. Nerling 2. Uh, Sarah's almost ready to make a bunch of these available to you guys. She has like 130 of them physically in her possession. All various, very, very, all different varieties. And uh, she won't be able to get to the post office till tomorrow to find out the exact details of getting them shipped. But we did go to, found a FedEx yesterday and get this one. She pumped in her dad's address in New Brunswick, across Canada. And FedEx wanted $70 just to ship it. A hat like that in a in a uh, cushioned envelope. How ridiculous is that? But anyway, but I remember before earlier on we had the hat hunt store cracked open a few years ago. Um, we just used general mail and it wasn't it wasn't expensive at all. But anyway, that's the word on that. Oh, and another thing too is I'm going to have to eat a slice of humiliation pie because unfortunately right now at this stage of the game, um, Venmo, PayPal is the same thing. And she's been trying to hook up some other form of payment, which has absolutely been a pain in the ass. And there's the PayPal was already in place; they're already available. So it, we're going to have to eat a slice of humiliation pie, I think, and have to uh, this pisses me off and use them just to get this initial this batch of hats she had made out. And then I think she might be changing up to a complete different system after that. I don't know. But anyway, just so you guys know, you'll be able to grab these things in the next couple days. And uh, it's in the early stages. We've got to get a bunch of shit ironed out. But, uh, you yeah, know, you're frustrated, aren't you? You're doing pretty good, though. I'm not whining. But anyway, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch. She's got a whole pile of real cool stuff that's going to be available. And uh, obviously, everything gets better as you go and as you learn more, right? But anyways, currently we're going to have to eat some humiliation. I'm going to have to eat some humiliation pie as PayPal Venmo is going to be utilized, unfortunately, for a very short time. Canadians can use e-transfers, and then uh, but I'll get you up to speed when that goes down in the next two days, all right? All right, we're going to leave, okay? Thank you for your patience. You've been a good little puppy. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. All right, no jumping off that rock. I'm not taking you home soaking wet. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Nope, no, nope, I'm coming to get you. No soaking wet, puppy. Ready to your puppy? Let's go.
and this is how you come down.